sportsontappodcast.com, the place to go where you can listen to past shows, read featured articles, check out all of our social media updates, plus much, much more. Sportsontappodcast.com, the official website of Sports on Tap. For up-to-the-minute info on local high school sports action, including photos, videos, and live updates, be sure to follow Sports on Tap on Twitter, Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G Fitness. Your goal is our goal. RRT Productions, specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges. Affordable, experienced, and a high-quality video. Make us your local video production company. Visit our website, rrt-productions.com, and contact us today. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit, you win you're listening to sports on tap presented by rrt productions here are your hosts rob troutman josh jeffy ed dick and sean duffy Welcome to Sports on Tap. It's our Ohio high school football coverage week three game recaps. I'm Rob Troutman. Josh Jeffy with me here in Studio J in Brunswick, Ohio. Ed Dick and Sean Duffy will be joining us uh, via the phone here in our RT Productions hotline here shortly. And uh, you can catch us on Twitter at SOT Podcast. Use the hashtag SOTHSF. Go to sportsontappodcast.com where we have archives of all these uh, podcasts. We also have our stories. We have video, pictures, and much, much more there. Um, Go to our Facebook page, Instagram. Uh, We're everywhere. Our YouTube page has videos, has archived this, iTunes. Um, We're all over the place, Josh. And uh, welcome back for uh, week three. Yes, it was uh, kind of an interesting week three for us. Uh, a lot of weather delays, um, you know, that that really hampered a lot of games. So a lot of games this week had to uh, finish up with uh, on Saturday. But, you know, later on coming on the show, we we are also, as a reminder, going to have our G&G Fitness Coach of the Week poll results. Uh, really tightly contested uh, matchup this week between two of our uh, contestants. Uh, we will reveal um, our RT Productions Player of the Week poll tonight, and then we'll uh, let you also in on our uh, Week Four Game of the Week, which uh, went through some debate earlier this week. Uh, and and a little behind the curtain, we actually switched it up for you. Uh, and we're going to switch up the show a little bit. Um, we're going to start the show here with uh, Sean Duffy. He's going to be coming on here momentarily. He's going to recap. Uh, everything going on in the Suburban League. Um, I will be taking over after that recap of the GCC, which was uh, an interesting week with a couple um, big games that uh, took place in that one. Uh, Rob will be, of of course, going over the Southwestern Conference uh, as well. And then to, to wrap it up, we'll have the one and only Ed Dick going over the Great Lakes uh, Conference with some uh, – uh, good games, but uh, momentarily, Sean Duffy's going to join us, um, talk about the Suburban League uh, Week 3 recap, um, and we're getting him on the line currently right now. Sean, can you hear us? 
I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine, my friend. How's everything going? Guys, I'm sitting here in beautiful Pensacola, Florida. It is <laughs> 96 degrees. I'm looking out into what is can only be described very, very busy road on the first floor of the Hampton Inn, and I'm ready to come home to Cleveland. Well, all right. Well, you can uh, reminisce a little bit by uh, starting over your week three recap of the uh, Suburban League. So, Sean, take it away. Absolutely, guys. Great to be with you on uh, on week, to recap week three. Starting off the Suburban League, I know we touched on it probably earlier to have to show a lot of these games. Momentum was a big thing um, that kind of worked both ways because some of the, a lot of these games had to in the middle or had to be started completely over in some respects, on Saturday. So we're going to go through it. First off, we're going to start with the National Division. This was really the last week for the National Division to be in non-conference play. Uh, so we're going to start with the non-conference National Division. First off, Brexville, heading into Strongsville and Brexville, could not escape with could not escape with a win. They lose a big one to Strongsville, 48-32. to Brexville now 1-2 and two on the year. They will host three one of the hottest teams in the national division. So in week four, brush, I'm sorry, brush heading into Hudson and Hudson finally got on the winning side of things. Thanks in large part to running back drew Leitner rushing for four rushing touchdowns on the night. Hudson is now one and two and guys, I'll say this one more time. They are a very dangerous one and two team. They will host Wadsworth in week four. Speaking of Wadsworth, they, into B country, not Brexville, Barview Heights, bees, the Ladina bees. <laughs> and Don Laparo that had carried trucked the ball 28 times for 197 yards and three touchdowns, but it wasn't enough as Medina was able to snap Wadsworth's 22 game regular season win streak, 31 28. Wadsworth falls to 2 and 1 on the season. They will look to rebound as again, as, as I mentioned, they face Hudson. At Hudson in week, Nordonia playing, man, traveling in to play Mayfield, and this is one of those games that was stopped right in the middle of the game, right after halftime, had to be picked up. The Nordonia Knights got out to a twenty, or uh, were down twenty-seven nothing in at half uh, when actually when play was suspended. When they when they came back on Saturday, they were able to rattle off twenty-three unanswered points, but that was as close as they would get. As Bill, as quarterback for Nordonia, Billy Levac finished the game. 18 of 40 for 300 yards and two touchdowns in a losing effort. Nordonia losing to Mayfield 43 to 23. Uh, Nordonia unfortunately falls to one and two. They will host and face Twinsburg in week four. My big game out of the national division uh, that was non conference and not cross divisional was Solon Comets traveling in to take on the Stowe Monroe Bulldogs. And I know Josh is going to hit on this, but Solon got stopped in Stowe. Owen Bainbridge had one passing and one rushing touchdown. Running back Seth Shinsky, Michael Azer, Chad Walliver, all had rushing touchdowns for the Bulldogs. Stowe's defense held Solon to 154 yards rushing and no touchdowns. The reason I mention this is because Solon has been relying almost solely on the rushing attack. They had all their scores. Their only two touchdowns came through the air, which is not something they are very uh, are very used to, at least early in the season. We've seen a lot of run from Solon. Again, huge win for the Stowe Monroe Bulldogs. Stowe Monroe Bulldogs and huge over Solon, 50 to 19. Stowe will end up, will, oh, sorry. <laughs> you meant, did I lose it? Uh, no, you're over. good. We still hear you, sorry, Sean. I, okay, sorry. I thought I, I'm uh, I'm on the phone, so I don't know what I'm doing right now. That's all right. See, this is what happens when I travel out. That's all right. You got it. You got to regain your place. And, and as I mentioned, sir. No, go ahead, Sean. <laughs> I was, I was on a roll. Sorry, I'm cutting it out. I want to make sure I get everything. Uh, just to finish up on Stowe, Stowe will end up hosting to Broadview Heights. The bees come a calling. To play in week four that's the national division non-conference play i wanted to get some thoughts from john on the stow game uh you know obviously not something Solon was expecting and not something i was expecting when i looked at the scores the next day uh no that's absolutely correct sean i mean there's certain games of the of the year that you just happen to come out and the team just played better in all facets of the game and this is definitely uh one of them and you know i'll talk about a little bit um 
a little bit later, but this was uh, Solon's worst defeat in almost five years. Uh, the um, last time they lost this bad was thirty-four nothing to the Brunswick Blue Devils, um, and that was in two thousand uh, and twelve. So uh, it's it. I'm sorry, two thousand fourteen. So you know that was a big loss for them, um, to say the least. Yeah, and it was something very surprising. I wanted to get the GCC guru. Uh, his opinion on that, but, I, but stay tuned to see how he reacts to that. Alleged, one. allegedly, uh, move, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. Uh, moving on to the American division of the Suburban League, their non-conference matchups. Uh, first off, we're going to try Copley traveling against the Uniontown Lake, and unfortunately for Copley, they were only put up one touchdown against Union Lake's forty-three unanswered points. Uh, remember Riley Reed for the Copley Indians got into the touch, got into the end zone. Uh, there was a late field goal, but a or, I'm sorry, Uniontown Lake was too much for Copley. Uh, Copley was completely dominated in the game, both offensively and defensively, again, only scoring the nine points. Copley is now one and two, and they will host Roosevelt in week four. Speaking of Roosevelt, they had a huge non-conference rivalry matchup against the Ravenna. And again, this was a game that started on Friday, but had to be ended up, ended on Saturday due to the weather issues. Uh the game was tied at seven even after they restarted, and they had to go into three overtimes. And unfortunately, Ravenna, or sorry, Ravenna secured the win with a 29-yard field goal, and that was all. This was a 10-7 game as Ravenna beats Roosevelt 10 to seven. Roosevelt falls to 0 three, and as I mentioned, they will host in week four. Coventry, Coventry, traveling to Thalman were not a very hospitable guest. Talmadge only. Talmadge's only points came as a block for a touchdown, and they missed their extra point. Coventry then rattled off 27 unanswered points, and this was all she wrote. Kevin, Coventry wins 27-6, which falls to 0-3. Trap Revere. They will play Revere. They will play at Revere in week three. Uh, speaking of the Revere Minutemen, Nathan Clenow, 13 of 25. It was two passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdowns, but it wasn't enough as Revere traveled in to play CBCA and, and dropped a heartbreaker 38-4 to CBCA. There's nothing they could do about this. Uh, you know, Klanowski played a really great game running for my player of the week, but unfortunately, in, in order to be player of the week, your team's got to come out on the winning side of things. Revere, as I mentioned, will host Talmadge in week four. Now into the cross-divisional matchup. These were three divisional matchups that we saw between the Suburban and the American divisions. Barberton traveling into Cuyahoga Falls, and Barberton had a bitter taste in their match after losing last week to Stowe. And they wasted no time making the Black Tigers pay. Boss, five different individual Magic offensive players scored for Barberton. Kenny Watkins, Caleb Vega, and the wide receiver are both cut passes for touchdown. Running backs, Malik Spragling, Kenneth Hood, and Markham McKinney rushed the ball for touchdowns. The big the big thing in here is you mentioned the falls is right in the back of Rob Pace, uh, who has been I'm sorry, Rob Graves, who was who had averaged over two hundred yards per rushing over the past two weeks. He was held to just eighty eight yards for the game by Barberton's defense and only one touchdown. That was on 23 carries. Barberton defense didn't allow a pass until the middle of the third. So this was a on both sides of the ball. They were able to score. Well. They were able to stop Kyle Falls from rushing the ball and, and really running over teams as they've been doing the past couple of weeks. Uh, Cuyahoga Falls quarterback, uh, this is going to be a tough one, Br- Bradovan Arsenal. He ended up with two touchdown passes late in the game, but it was pretty much too little too late. Robertson is now 2-1. and one. They will travel to take on Highland uh, in week four. Cuyahoga Falls, 2-1, and one, and they travel to take on North Royalton. Speaking of those two teams, Highland is now only after a rough loss on the road in North Royalton. Uh, the Bears ended up bouncing back from a, humi- and what, a humiliating loss to Brunswick in week two with a 35-28 victory over Highland. Uh, North Royalton improves to 2-1. and one. They, as I mentioned, will take on Cuyahoga Falls. Highland, you know, your non-conference, your own three for the first time since, really since we've been covering the Suburban League. Um, you know, this, is the, this is the first time we've ever seen the decline this way. 
Uh, they will host Barberton. Barberton is kind of that steamroller. He's they're getting into conference play right now. It's uh it's been a big 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 for Barberton. They're still singing from that stone balls uh, loss last week. I'm sorry, the week before, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. My final cross division game is not much of a game at all. Boy, take traveling into Twinsburg, and they had no trouble at all as they posted a 30 to nothing victory. Aurora's defense now, get this, guys, has pitched their second shutout of the season. They had one in week one. They had one in week three. They've only given up seven total points the entire season. That's pretty impressive for a team that one of the questions coming this year was how are they going to be able to defend against the Barbertons and now in the, in, in the playoffs going forward. Um, Twinsburg, you know, they had a really good – they won a game, but they're – they were just kind of – they were really outmatched in this game. Twinsburg is, is one and two. They will host Nordonia uh, in week four, and Aurora will be the lowest in the in the American – they host Padua in week four. The coach will be – got to give it to Tom Phillips himself, rallying his team to a really impressive victory over one of the powers in the area, uh, over Solon, and my of the week is – Hudson running back Drew Leitner, who had four rushing touchdowns on the night in a winning effort for Hudson, bouncing back after two tough losses in the first two weeks of the school. Guys, that's the Suburban League I can do from sunny Florida. I'm doing the best I can. Nice yeah, work. It's, it was a it was a uh, it was an impressive week. Again, I still can't get over so. Um, I think Barberton, you know, is in the national division, so is gonna be something. To see how Wadsworth bounces back from a loss late in the early in the year, because um, they were rolling a couple of first couple of games, and Medina, Medina again. I'm not sure Josh can talk about this in the GCC, but Medina is a team that's got to be on people's radar. They're a tough team, and they'd be a very good team in Wadsworth. Yeah, I think you're right, Sean, and uh, great job on your recaps. Um, you know, I think you're right about Hudson. You know, uh, that's a team that's it's one and two. The record may. Um, surprise some people, but they've pl- they, their two losses are ver- versus uh, very good teams. And big game against Wadsworth uh, coming up. That's going to be an interesting game uh, to keep an eye on. And and uh, like you said, Barberton, you know, getting a, a win. And uh, you know, it's going to be in the, really in your conferences up and down. It's it's very competitive, and uh, it's kind of up in the air with some of these teams right now. You know, I think the national division is probably the most, I would say, wide open. Um, with there's about three teams that I can see, or if you throw in, you know, a, a North Wales team getting uh, their stuff together and, and you know getting on a winning streak, three or four teams that could make that could make a run. But the American division, I really do think for the first time, now that Highland is, I mean, Highland's got to got to figure out a way to right that ship. The zero and three. Uh, you yeah. know, and it doesn't get any easier with Barberton coming in. I think it's is really Aurora versus Barberton. We'll see that matchup obviously coming up later this later this year. Uh, we'll definitely pay attention to that. That's probably going to decide that conference, or I'm sorry, that division. But yeah, my again, my head, my hats off to the Stowe Monroe Falls Bulldogs. Yeah, they're on for, a roll. Uh, you know, really take taking it too. I mean, uh, uh, by all accounts, you talk to you talk about the, one of the top public school programs in the in the Northeast Ohio and it's men or Solon. I mean, those are top tier, you know, that's the, those are nice computer points for the Stone Monroe Falls Bulldogs because Solon's going to be a good team all year. They just got punched in the mouth early and you know, the, the Bulldogs were, were, were game, a game to win that game essentially. Yeah. And I think their confidence was uh, rising, you know, ever since they beat Barberton, they knocked them off and maybe surprised some people, but they're coming out firing on all cylinders here early in the year. And, uh, Sean, great job with the Suburban League. Enjoy sunny Florida. It's also uh, been sunny here in Ohio, and uh, we'll look to have you back in uh, the land soon. Yeah, I'll be back in the land. We'll be back live in Studio J on Monday. So don't you worry, folks. You're going to get a heap of help out of me. (laughs) All right, Sean, have a good one, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, guys. Have a good show. All right. Thanks, Sean. Well, good job by Sean Duffy there recapping the um, Suburban uh, Division, he, Suburban League. I'm sorry, he did a good job there. Oh, we'll move right on over to my conference, the Greater Cleveland Conference. We're going to start off 
uh, with Menor. They uh, took on a team from up north, literally north, um, a team from Ontario in this one. And this one was actually called at the half. Uh, Menor with a 28-15 to victory uh, over north. Uh, Menor improves to 3-0 and on the season. All four touchdowns for Menor were uh, by QB Ian Kipp. He had two rushing touchdowns and two passing touchdowns in this one. Again, this game was called at the half due to weather. Um, and Menor improves to 3-0. and Another 3-0 and team in the GCC. Sean mentioned it earlier. The Strongsville Mustangs with a 48-32 victory over the Brexville Bees. Um, Strongsville was led uh, early on in this game by their workhorse running back, Garrett Clark. He had two rushing touchdowns uh, for uh, the Mustangs in the first half of the game. This game was also uh, suspended and picked up on Saturday. Um, Strongsville was able to take advantage of the lead on Saturday and win 48-32 over uh, Brexville. Strongsville again improves uh, to 3-0. In one of the uh, best games of the week in all of high school football, Euclid with a 49-48 to th- uh, victory over the Cam- Kent McKinley uh, Bulldogs. Euclid improves to 3-0. and We'll pick it up late in the second half. Uh, running back for Euclid, Jabir uh, Mujiad with a three-yard touchdown run, uh, and that made it 28-21 Panthers at the half. Uh, quarterback for the Panthers, Deion Valentine, had two fourth-quarter touchdowns, and this one came down late. Uh, it was 49-48. Uh, to 48. McKinley was going for a two-point conversion, but the defense uh, for Euclid stepped up and denied the conversion, so that led to the final score, 49-48. Um, Euclid again improves to 3-0 on the season. Another 3-0 team in the GCC, the Medina Bees, with a big-time victory over the playoff. Bees. All right, you could do it now. <laughs> I'm not going to take Sean's stick, but uh, I, I, I guess we could go like this. If we, You know, he does it for Brexit. I can go Medina Bees. Real yeah, low, yeah, real calm, cool, and collective. Because like that's, Gay cause that's how they're playing this year. Calm, cool, and collective that's Medina right, with man. some three solid victories early on in this season, uh, and this one included – uh, Medina was led by wide receiver Luke Hensley. He started the game with a 73-yard touchdown uh, reception. Ryan Miller added a field goal. This game was also delayed uh, on Friday, um, finished up on Saturday, and we already talked about it. Luke Hensley also added another touchdown late in the game. And the Bees, 31-28 over Wadsworth. Now, just to give you an idea. Big game there. How uh, Medina has played earlier. And so, uh, we already mentioned him, Strongsville is really playing well. As well, but uh, Medina, for example, big time victory over Cleveland Heights and Wadsworth, also a uh, shutout victory over Highlands. So those are three solid victories heading into um, their Week Four matchup, which begins conference play. Um, we already mentioned it, talked about it. Uh, the Solon comments uh, with a pretty devastating defeat uh, against Stowe, fifty to nineteen. Solon drops to two and one. Again, this was their worst, uh, worst loss since two thousand fourteen, where they lost. Uh, 34 to nothing. In this game, though, Solon, Solon was able to move the ball. They had 367 yards of total offense, 214 through the air uh, by quarterback Pat McQuaid. He also added two touchdown passes in this one. Just was not enough for the high uh, for the Solon Comets to take on the high-powered Stone Monroe Falls Bulldogs, and they lose 50 to 19. Uh, the aforementioned Cleveland Heights, where the Medina Bees beat, uh, they actually defeated um, their um, next door neighbor out east, Cleveland Heights defeated Shaker Heights fifty to six in this one. Uh, wow. Shaker Heights drops to two on one. The lone bright spot for the Red Raiders um, is their running back. He had thirty five rushes, two hundred eighteen yards, one touchdown in this one. Uh, Brunswick improved to three and zero with a forty two to nothing victory over Rhodes. Uh, this game was called at the half uh, due to the weather. Um, in this one, Jacob Charette had a one-yard touchdown pass, and the Blue Devils, um, they got rushing touchdowns, two of them from Brandon uh, Koenig, Nick, uh, one from Nick Vanden, one from Paul Nall, and the other one from Jonah Clement. Uh, Brunswick improves to 3-0. and Wow. That is one, two, three, four, five, three 3-0 teams in the GCC. Um, and that wraps it up. My Coach of the Week nominee was Jeff Rotsky. Um, of Euclid with that big solid victory. Kent McKinley, you know, is notoriously no slouch um, 
uh, in Division One. They're always one of the power players uh, in it so far this um, year. Um, Kent McKinley has victories over Warren G. Harding and Bucktel. Um and you could just came out, played a really tough game, and they were my player of the week, or my, so, excuse me, Jeff Rasky is my coach of the week nominee. Uh, my player of the week nominee, which will go on the RRT Productions player of the week poll after the show ends tonight, is wide receiver from Medina, Luke Hensley, uh, with two touchdowns and a big, big time victory over the Wadsworth Bulldogs. The uh, week four schedule looks like this, Rob. They, we begin conference play. So some uh, undefeated could possibly um, be defeated uh, this coming week as Minner travels to Illyria. Euclid will play at Medina. Shaker at Strongsville. And Solon will pl- travel to Brunswick. And that's your week four uh, future look at the schedule this Friday and your week three recap in the Greater Cleveland Conference. Yeah, I think uh, Solon at Brunswick is going to be an interesting game to uh, keep an eye on. You know, for Brunswick's sake, they've had three solid wins. Um, you know, after, you know, a down season last year, Solon's going to be a good test for them, especially, you know, they get them at home. Um, yeah. You know, keep Sol- an eye on that one. Yeah, and Solon's going to want to come back after, you know, that tough loss against Stowe, um, you know, where they're down. So they're going to really uh, want to be able to come back and bounce back from that loss. And I think the other game in my mind that sticks out is Euclid at Medina. I mean, Medina has been one of the hottest teams, I'd say, in high school uh, football, yeah, especially right. in the Greater Cleveland Conference. Yeah, and they've had they had a, a pretty uh, tough non-conference schedule. I mean, we talked about Cleveland Heights; they just beat Shaker Heights fifty to six. Medina yeah. beat them earlier in the season, uh, week one. So Medina is uh, really surprising and, and no slouch, but probably no surprise to that coaching staff and the players. Uh, Medina's got a good team this year, and they're looking to make a run. Coach Larry Laird, there, right? I mean. He uh, is back. You know, he's been there. Um, you know, he was there once, went to Avon Lake, and then returned. So it's going to be a fun week four in the Greater Cleveland Conference. But right now we'll step away. We'll take a short break. When we come back, the Southwestern Conference Week 3 game recap along with the Great Lakes Conference. So we'll uh, go over all those games. And remember... We'll go over the G&G Fitness Coach of the Week poll. The results are in. We'll tell you who wins that. And also our Game of the Week uh, recap we'll go over. It was Fairview and Rocky River. That was a good game uh, to be a part of. And we'll tell you where we're at this coming up Friday. All coming up on Sports on Tap. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back. want to support a great local store that supports Cleveland and Ohio sports. GV Artwork and Design has the best stylish sports apparel, whether it's Cleveland sports, college gear, I've seen high school gear, your favorite sports teams, not just Cleveland, they have it all. Now, a special offer for Sports on Tap listeners. Use the code ONTAP10 and receive 10% off your full order. Go to gvartwork.com. That's gvartwork.com. GV Art and Design, original and one of a kind. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G Fitness, your goal is our goal. Listen to our shows live on Mixer or join us the first Monday of every month at Z's Cream and Bean. Look at it, 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley. Want to listen to past shows? Go to our YouTube page or website, www.sportsontappodcast.com. sportsontappodcast.com the place to go where you can listen to past shows read featured articles check out all of our social media updates plus much much more sportsontappodcast.com the official website of sports on tap
No matter the season, it's always the right time for Z's Cream of Bean. Whether you want to warm up with some of their delicious soups, chilies, or coffees, or sample from their delicious selection of ice cream, shakes, and other cool treats, Z's Cream of Bean has you covered. Visit them at 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio, and tell them the guys at Sports on Tap sent you. RRT Productions, specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges. Affordable, experienced, and a high-quality video. Make us your local video production company. Visit our website, rrt-productions.com, and contact us today. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit, you win for up to the minute info on local high school sports action including photos videos and live updates be sure to follow sports on tap on twitter instagram and like us on facebook Welcome back to Sports on Tap, live from Studio J. I'm Rob Trapp, we have Josh Jeffy. Sean Duffy joined us via the RRT Productions hotline, and Ed Dick will join us here at 820. I want to remind you to go to our website, sportsontappodcast.com, where we archive all of our shows on there. We have videos. Um, we have our stories from our Game of the Week. Visit our sponsors as well. We have GV Artwork. If you use uh, GV Artwork's code ONTAP10, you get 10% off your entire order. And they have great T-shirts. Um, you know, Cleveland, I mean, you see them all over. If you're on Twitter, go to GV Artwork. And uh, G, as in G, is Grandma Valerie Artwork. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, it was GV. But uh, they have great stuff, and uh, you can visit their artwork or their uh, website as well, gvartwork.com. Um, a lot of great stuff there. Z's Cream and Bean is up uh, there, and we also have G&G Fitness. They do our Coach of the Week, and they support uh, local coaches that really dedicate their time. And that's why we do the polls every week because, um, you know, want to support the local coaches and give them some recognition. I know they don't like to take it, but they dedicate a lot of their time to these high school athletes and not only on the field, but off the field as well. So I um, want to thank them for uh, sponsoring that segment. But now, uh, Josh, let's get uh, into the thick of it here in the Southwestern Conference uh, for week three. They started conference play. Yeah, conference play got uh, into it. I mean, some teams did already start, but right. we'll start You're with right. – um, Olmstead Falls is they jumped out to a 28 to 12 lead in the first quarter in this one. Um, and Westlake, they did score in this game and they had two big scores and they were with Dylan Bednar um, as he found Austin Norris for a 76 yard strike and Travis Munkin to Dylan Bednar. And we'll hear that often this year on a 63 yard strike, but that's all the demons would do on this night as Olmstead Falls, they win big here, 49-12. to As Olmstead falls, they had 270 yards or 74 yards rushing and 416 yards total. 49-12, to Olmstead falls, the winner at Westlake, is uh, this concluded before the rain. Um, actually, when the rain stopped it, um, and they didn't play on Saturday as this one was out of hand a little bit here as Olmstead falls improved to 3-0, and 2-0 and in conference, and Westlake falls to 0-3. Zero in two. Avon traveling to Lakewood, and after an early score by the Lakewood Rangers, Avon would score 26 in the first quarter, and they get a big win here. Um, you know, they again did not play on Saturday either. It was 33 to 13 before the rain came down, and uh, Avon a big winner as they improved to 3 0, 2 0 in conference. Lakewood uh, falls to 0 and 3, 0 and 2, but they put up 13 early on. 
Um, but Avon just too strong here, and, and Coach Elder has that Avon team on a little bit of a roll. Now Midview, they travel to a very tough place to play in Amherst, and the game was postponed Friday, so they did resume this game on Saturday. Um, and in the second quarter, Midview did tie this game at 7 with an 11-yard touchdown pass by sophomore quarterback Ethan Surdock to junior wide receiver and cornerback Joseph Bratkovic. Um, in the third quarter, though, it was uh, finally the tie was unbroken by Amherst as uh, Kyle Ferguson, he's a wide receiver and a cornerback. He caught an 18-yard pass uh, from junior quarterback Tyler Brezina, and that was enough in this game as the Comets win 21-7. to They improved to 3-0, and 2-0 and in conference to the Comets, and Midview falls to 2-1, and 1-1 and overall, when, again, Amherst winning 21-7. To seven, North Olmstead traveling to North Ridgeville, and this game was a bit surprising to start. As uh, Tyler Richmond, he went under center here and started the scoring for North Ridgeville on a 23-yard touchdown run. And soon after that, the Rangers would score again and lead 14 to nothing at halftime. North uh, Ridgeville would continue to lead 21 to six um, at one point in this game, but North Olmstead. They weren't giving up in this game, scoring on an 11-yard pass from Anthony Guerchio, who was our player of the week last week, to Zachary Doucette. The two-point conversion was good. It was 21-14. to The Eagles, though, they would recover an onside kick, and North Olmstead would score again and go for two one more time and get it, as they would ultimately win this game 24-21 to after a big comeback, trailing 21-6 to at one point. For North Olmstead, it was quarterback Anthony Guerchio. Um, he was uh, had an outstanding performance, 16 for 31, 180 yards and three touchdowns. And for North Ridgeville, they were led by Tyler Richmond, who had 24 carries for 224 yards and three touchdowns. Again, the winner in this one, North Olmstead, 24, North Ridgeville, uh, 21. As North Olmsted improves to two and one, two and zero oh in conference, and North Ridgeville zero and three, zero and two. Avon Lake taking on Berea Mid Park, and Avon Lake's Michael Corbo, man, did he have a day for the Shoreman? He scored on a rushing touchdown with two thirty-eight uh, left here in the first quarter. It quickly made the score fourteen to nothing, and uh, that's where the game stopped. But the Shoreman. They didn't look back. They scored 21 more points uh, when they came back and played this game, and they got a big win against Berea Mid Park, 35 to nothing in this game. Avon Lake quarterback Michael Corbo had 23 rushes for 191 yards and two touchdowns. He also passed 30 of 54 for 391 and two touchdowns. He had 582 yards of total offense alone for the Shoreman. As Gage Dusler, he had 55 rushes for the Shoreman, 287 yards, and three touchdowns. As Avon Lake, a big winner against Berea Mid Park, 35 to nothing. Avon Lake, two and one, one and one now in conference as Berea Mid Park falls to zero and three, zero and two. And looking at Week Four in the Southwestern Conference uh, schedule-wise, Berea Mid Park takes on Avon. Westlake travels to Avon Lake. North Olmstead takes or North Ridgeville takes on Olmstead Falls. Lakewood travels to Midview and Amherst goes on the road to North Olmstead. So some big games there, Josh. Um, you know, looking at North Ridgeville, you know, they've had some close games and it seems like they've had it in their in their hands and they, you know, fell apart at the end. They take on a very tough Olmstead Falls team who continues to win it. Amherst and North Olmstead could be a very good game. Yeah, very good game. North Olmstead, like you said, coming off that that good victory against North Ridgeville, but going back, uh, Michael Corbo. I mean, that was uh, that was a performance beyond a uh, performance. That might be the top performance that we've had, uh, will have all season. Just you know, over 500 yards just himself, and then to add another 200 uh, rushing yards um, uh, by their running back too as well. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, you know it's it's tough. Uh, friend of friend of show, Coach Hunick, Bree Mid Park. They're off to a rough start this year, yeah. hoping to get that turned around here as they get uh, midway through uh, their season. But um, again, uh, it's a it's a great great effort put on by Avon Lake. 
And, yeah, my coach of the week uh, was Mike Passarello of Amherst, getting a big win against a very good Midview team. Um, he just continues to win there. I mean, he's doing a great job with that Comets team. Um, and, and when I go to my uh, Player of the Week, the RT Production Southwestern Conference Player of the Week goes to Avon Lake uh, quarterback Michael Corbo, 23 rushes, 191 yards and two touchdowns, and passing 300 and 91 yards and two touchdowns, a total of 582 yards of total offense for Michael Corbo as he's my Southwestern Conference Player of the Week. And uh, we'll have a poll on our Twitter page. So go at SOT Podcast, um, and all of us are picking our Players of the Week in respective conferences, and we'll put them all together and have one individual Player of the Week. So congratulations to Michael Corbo of Avon Lake. What an absolute great uh, week for him. And con- congratulations uh, to my coach of the week, uh, Mike Passarello of Amherst. He did a great job and continues to do a great job with the comments there. So right now we'll step away. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going to have the Great Lakes Conference. Ed will join us um, on the RRT Productions hotline. We'll go over the G&G Fitness Coach of the Week poll um, that was on our Twitter page at SOT Podcast. Um, also get out our Player of the Week poll. We'll go over our Game of the Week, which was Rocky River versus Fairview, and tell you where we're going to be at this Friday, all coming up on Sports on Tap. Don't go anywhere. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G Fitness, your goal is our goal. Listen to our shows live on Mixer or join us the first Monday of every month at Z's Cream and Bean. Look at it, 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley. Want to listen to past shows? Go to our YouTube page or website, www.sportsontappodcast.com. Sportsontappodcast.com, the place to go where you can listen to past shows, read featured articles, check out all of our social media updates, plus much, much more. SportsOnTapPodcast.com, the official website of Sports on Tap. No matter the season, it's always the right time for Z's Cream of Bean. Whether you want to warm up with some of their delicious soups, chilies, or coffees, or sample from their delicious selection of ice cream, shakes, and other cool treats, Z's Cream of Bean has you covered. Visit them at 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio, and tell them the guys at Sports on Tap sent you. RRT Productions. Specializing in creating sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes. Want to play at the next level? Promote your talents with a video to send colleges. Affordable, experienced, and a high-quality video. Make us your local video production company. Visit our website, rrt-productions.com, and contact us today. RRT Productions. We shoot. We edit. You win. For up-to-the-minute info on local high school sports action, including photos, videos, and live updates, be sure to follow Sports on Tap on Twitter, Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Okay, you want to support a great local store that supports Cleveland and Ohio sports. GV Artwork and Design has the best stylish sports apparel, whether it's Cleveland sports, college gear, I've seen high school gear, your favorite sports teams, not just Cleveland, they have it all. Now, a special offer for Sports on Tap listeners. 
Use the code ONTAP10 and receive 10% off your full order. Go to gvartwork.com. That's gvartwork.com. GV Art and Design, original and one of a kind. Welcome back to Sports on Tap. It's our Ohio High School football coverage week three game recaps. Want to thank everyone for joining us. Remember to go to our website, sportsontappodcast.com. We're at SOT Podcast on Twitter. And now joining us on the RRT Productions hotline is Ed Dick, who uh, covers our Great Lakes Conference. Ed, thanks for joining us. Hey, always, uh, always a pleasure to be back. Uh, it's a great, great uh Great, great show so far. I know, uh, you know Duffy uh, and myself, my, my cohort, my compadre, my <laughs> compatriot, uh, hanging out down in the uh, down in the Florida area, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm doing, doing great things for the Super League and obviously covering the uh, GCC and Southwestern Conference. And uh, always good to save. Uh, always good to bring to, to bring our new conference uh, to to its prominence here. So, uh, week three recap for the Great Lakes Conference. Um, you know, as we have established in past shows, uh, there are nine teams in the Great Lakes Conference, which means uh, conference play starts pretty early, uh, much like that of the Southwestern Conference, where conference play starts after week one uh, with their 10-team conference, a uh, similar story with the Great Lakes. So uh, we'll start out. Uh, week three of the Great Lakes Conference started out on Thursday night as the Green Wave of Holy Name, one and one overall, they took on the invaders of Normandy, who, uh, who were winless. Uh, one of the many battles for Parma supremacy. Uh, there are four teams from Parma slash Parma Heights in this conference, so you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of rivalries uh, go on on a weekly basis uh, over there on uh, over there on uh, Parma Byers Field and also North Royalton, where Holy Name plays their home games. Uh, the Green Wave they did not mess around. They hung 41 points in the first quarter. On the Invaders, led by three touchdown passes from quarterback Nicholas McCurry. Uh, the Green Wave uh, rolled to a 59 to nothing victory over Normandy. Uh, Holy Name starts out their conference season 1 and 0 in the GLC. They are 2 and 1 overall. They are going to host Rocky River in week four. The Invaders still looking for their first win of the season. They are 0 and 3. They will host Garfield Heights in week four. Moving on to undefeated Valley Forge. They hosted the 1-1 Parma Redmond at Byers Field on Saturday night. The Patriots continued their dominance on the ground with their wing key offense. Six players scored a touchdown for Valley Forge, led by two touchdowns from running back Kentrell Marks. Uh, he led the way to a 45-10 victory over the Parma Redmond uh, with the win. Valley Forge, uh, led by head coach Marcello DeAngelis, they remain undefeated at 3-0. They will travel to Bay to continue conference play in week four. Pharma is 1-2. They will travel to Fairview. Like quite the battle uh, at over in Bay. Uh, we had the 2018 GLC co-champions uh, battling each other here in week three. Uh, Elyria Catholic traveling to Bay. <clears throat> the Rockets took advantage of an opportunistic defense. They intercepted Panthers quarterback Steven Madalinski five times, two of which were returned to the house, a 97-yard return by Ben Anderson and a 33-yard return by Cullen Gergie. And I apologize for mispronouncing that last name. Uh, it's G-E-R-G-Y-E. Please uh, email us. Tell me how to pronounce it for real. <laughs> um, the Rockets defense had five interceptions three sacks, and four turnovers by downs. Despite all of that, uh, the Leary Catholic kept it close. Uh, Leary Catholic piled up 473 yards of total offense. They more than doubled the Rockets' offense of 229 yards, but the Rockets' defense uh, prevailed uh, at 26-16 victory over the Panthers. 
Bay improves to 2-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in the conference. They will host undefeated Valley Forge in Week 4. Illyria Catholic drops to 2-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in the conference. They will continue their roadways against Medina Buckeye. Buckeye finished their non-conference slate against 1-1 one one Lodi Plover Relief. Uh, so a nice run Diamond County matchup here between two like-sized schools. It was the Armando Nice show. He scored all four touchdowns uh, in a 28-6 to victory over the Cloverleaf Colts. Uh, the Colts just cannot muster enough momentum uh, against the Bucks defense, uh, led by a, a defensive coordinator, Luke Beal, um, obviously with the head coach, uh, Greg Dennison, uh, over there as well. Uh, so Buckeye improves to 2-1 and one overall. Uh, they will host Illyria Catholic in Week 4. Uh, Cloverleaf is 1-2. and two. They will start Portage Trail Conference play against Streetboro in Week 4. Our Player of the Week, just with these uh, specific games uh, that, I, that, I spoke, uh, that I spoke about, our Player of the Week is Armando Nye, running back from Buckeye. He totaled four touchdowns in their victory over the Colts. The Coach of the Week is Ron Rutt from Bay Village. Uh, quite the resounding statement that they made after uh, taking a loss against Buckeyes in Week 2. Uh, that is a heck of a way to bounce back. You know, we talked about a little bit about last week how, um, you know, you know, Bay having seen Buckeyes for the first time, and uh, it didn't seem as if they were, um, you know, they may not have been ready for what was coming at them. Um, the more that Bay plays Buckeyes, I'm sure the familiarity will, will get there. You know, but Bay's been playing really, really Catholic in this conference for a little bit, for a couple of years, and um, obviously you can't say enough about their defense. Um, Five interceptions against last year's player of the week, Stephen Madalinski, um, is, is is huge. And being able to be outgained by Illyria Catholic by by a two to one margin and still coming up with a six uh, with a ten point victory, that's huge. Uh, that that's a, that's a huge win for Bay. Um, Get some computer points at stake there. Uh, we'll really talk about computer points, but uh, that's a really that's a really big bounce back game uh, for Bay there. Um, other thoughts before we get into our SOT player uh, game of the week, which also featured two great list conference games, uh, uh, a great right, great write up by Rob Troutman uh, on, the, on our website. Um, you know, out of the four Parma teams that are that are that are in this conference, I think we're starting to see a, see it see them separate themselves a little bit with Valley Forge, Holy Name, Parma, and Normandy, probably in that order right now. I'm sure Holy Neal has something to say about that once they play Valley Sports later in the season. We'll see uh, how that how that shakes out for them. Unfortunately for Parma and Normandy, um, well, they, they just don't seem to have uh, have enough right now to compete with with Holy Name and, and Valley Sports at the moment. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see as the season progresses uh, if they're able to to get their footing a little bit and 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 be remain competitive in this league. So. Um, and then, obviously, uh, Medina Buckeye, um, they're, they are going to get into conference play starting next week. Uh, we've talked about that uh, in, in past weeks and even leading up to the season. How is Bay, go- how, how is Bay, sorry, how is Buckeye going to respond being in a new conference with, with teams that are either like-sized or bigger uh, than, than their own school and, and also joining a conference that already had four playoff teams in it uh, from last year so. Uh, we're really going to see what Buckeyes made of in the next seven weeks, and see if they can make a push to to to, to clinch another another playoff spot and and can get their second victory in playoffs in Buckeye history in the playoffs. So, um, lots of good stuff to talk to you know, to go through from the Great Lakes Conference. And um, you know, without further ado, uh, Rob Chapman did have our SOT game of the week. Um, it was Rocky River against Fairview. Uh, it took a little bit more than a night to take care of this this one, didn't it, Rob? I'll tell you what, Ed. You know, this was an interesting game with, uh, you know, the storms coming in. Um, the the refs knew before the game started that at, at about 8.30 that uh, some storms might be rolling in here. So, I mean, to start the game, it was almost 90 degrees. It was pretty humid out there, but... You know, there was an absolute storm of scoring to start this game. Wow. Uh, Good I play know. on words I there, Rob. Like that. Nice job. That, I, I even used <laughs> that in my story, which you can uh, read at uh, sportsontappodcast.com. <laughs> 
Uh, but both teams, they punted to start the game, and the defenses really on both sides were pretty fast and physical early on. Um, but it was uh, with 8.44 left in the first quarter. Fairview special teams, they blocked the punt. First, uh, Rocky River, they snapped the ball over the punter's head uh, deep into their territory. He grabbed it, tried to kick it, but it was blocked. And, um, you know, Fairview had a good opportunity, but the the Rocky River defense uh, held them, and uh, they were unable to score. But then Rocky River's offense, they would – have the ball first uh, before anything happened here, and it was Pirates running back Tommy Beebe um, as he would go 98 yards. Fairview ended up punting. They pinned him at the two-yard line, and just when you thought Rocky River was pinned in their own area, in their own end, Rocky River would score 98 yards, Tommy Beebe, uh, to make it 6 nothing. The Pirates, they would try for a two-point conversion, but they were unable to convert, so uh, the score remained 6 nothing. The Pirates... Uh, in the first quarter with 6-12 remaining. And I think, you know, in this game, Rocky River definitely played well defensively, but they have some pretty good weapons on offense um, with Tommy Beebe uh, being one of them here, Ed. Yeah, uh, he was saying, you know, it's funny, Tommy and his brother Owen, uh, yeah. that, that's quite a you know, quite a punch there uh, that, that, that Joshua, the coach Joshua can deploy. Uh, so that Rocky River offense, uh, and both offensively and defensively, the Davy the, the Davy brothers are are, are excellent, uh, real big contributors to that Pirates team. Now the Warriors they would respond on a, on a very impressive drive that was capped off by a 28 yard touchdown run by Fairview running back Matt Kaufman, and he had an absolute huge game. Uh, for Fairview, they would make the extra point. It was 7-6 to six with a minute 12 left in the first quarter. Then Rocky River, they would get the ball back. Um, they turned it over uh, before the first quarter would end, and Fairview would recover a fumble that would be back into Rocky River territory to start uh, in the second quarter. Now in the second quarter, Fairview would drive down to the Rocky River 5-yard line. Um, they would have a 5-yard penalty that would push them back to the 10 and they were unable to really advance the ball past that point as they would stall at their 10-yard line. But they would bring in their sophomore kicker, David Nemeth, who would connect on a 27-yard field goal to add on to their lead. Um, it was 10-6 to here in the second quarter with 7.33 left. And actually, that's when uh, you know the game was delayed because of lightning. The storm eventually did calm down, Ed, but... Uh, because, you know, as the refs told me, because of the lightning, they have to wait an hour after they see the lightning to make sure that it's gone and to make sure it's safe for these players. So the one thing they did, they, the players did come out and stretch, but, again, they saw a little bit of lightning and the game was postponed uh, till Saturday morning, kind of like most of the games, I think, in the area. Not all of them, but uh, definitely some of the games on Friday nights. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I mean, I, I know, um, you know I, I know. Speaking for the, you know, at, at the Brunswick game, um, you know, we, we came out for the second half, and uh, as you know, they shortened the halftime from 20 to 15 minutes, and then as we uh, got back out in the field, um, the clock uh, was reset to 30 minutes. Um, I think it's, I don't know. I'm not sure what the rule is. I don't know if it's a half hour or an hour, but I think we're going by a half hour. Okay. Um, for the visibility of lightning would be a half hour after every strike. So, yeah. um, you know, as we were going back into the locker room, anticipating a huge storm, um, that's when uh, that's when the game was ended up being called uh, due to the inclement weather and, and quite honestly during, you know, due to uh, the lead that the Blue Devils had built up uh, over roads, which I know Josh went over earlier. So, um, yeah, to your point, though, uh, a lot of schools – uh, you know, this is one of those weeks where, you know, some schools were able to get it in depending on location and depending on, you know, how the flow of the game was going. Um, but a lot of games were postponed, um, you know, this, this one notwithstanding. So, um, you know, I, I quite honestly, I don't think either, I don't think any of us have been a part of that situation where games have been postponed until the next day. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit, bit of a delay, but not to the point where we had to say, yeah, we'll have to come back tomorrow morning and do it. I didn't continue the game. Um, you know, that's going to be a you – know, I don't really know what that situation looks like. I can't speculate. So, uh, you know, kudos to all these teams um, and their visiting – and probably more important than the visiting teams. And that's to drive back to wherever they, wherever they, wherever they played at. 
yeah. and came back out for it because you know, a lot of the schools, at least right now, are just getting into conference play. So you still had some teams that are traveling a good distance to get to their week three games. Um, that was not the case here. Um, you know, Rocky River and Fairview are pretty close to each other, so um, it was a nice, easy road uh, way. You know, a, a relatively easy road trip, not, not with the logistics. Um, you know, figuring out the logistics here. So, you know, as Rob, you know, as Rob wrote his story, the game continued Sunday morning or Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, the Pirates uh, took took the uh, they scored quickly, uh, 59 yard touchdown pass from quarterback Braden Steve to Christian Dean. Um, it was 13 13 going into the half. Uh, Rocky River put up tw- uh, 14 points in the third quarter. Uh, Fairview was shut out, and uh, at the end of the game, uh, the Pirates of Rocky River go on to win 34 to 20 in this game that lasted uh, a little bit longer than uh, a little bit longer than we're used to seeing. Uh, with this game. So uh, congratulations to Rocky River uh, over Fairview in the Sports on Tap game of the week uh, featuring the Great Lakes Conference here in week three. Uh, so a you know, tremendous game uh, back and forth. Um, Fairview so far having also joined a new conference, um, taking Rocky River, a playoff team uh, last year, um, you know, taking them, you know, taking them, and having really competing, they competed very well in this game. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how Fairview is going to progress in Great Lakes Conference play as well. Uh, so we'll do a quick look at the standings for the Great Lakes Conference before we move on. Uh, at the top is Tom Hines Valley Forge, three and zero overall, two and zero in the conference. They are the only undefeated team left in the GLC uh, overall. Elyria Catholic is two and one overall, one and one in the conference. Um, uh, Buckeye and Holy Name are both two and one overall. They are both one and zero oh in the conference. Their non-conference schedules are over. They will be playing conference games for the rest of the year. Bay is uh, in Rocky River are two and one overall. They are one and one in the conference. Fairview one and two overall, one and one in the conference. Parma one and two overall, zero oh and two in the conference. Normandy last place, zero oh and three overall, zero oh and two in the conference. Yeah, and you know, some good masters. yeah, there's some great. I mean, that's it's a competitive league. Like you broke it down beautifully with Buckeye because you know they're in a new conference, um, you know, and Bay has been at the top of that conference for a long time, and you know, for them to recover after you know Buckeye uh, played him tough and got a huge win against Bay um, and dominated that game, um, you know, it's going to be fun to see what happens in the Great Lakes Conference um, in in the game of the week. I think. Um, you know, Christian Dean for Rocky River, he's a wide receiver. He had 209 uh, reception yards, and Brandon Spies, the quarterback, only a sophomore um, for Rocky River, had 299 yards passing and three touchdowns. And, you know, for Fairview, I think I was impressed with Matt Kaufman. I mean, he had a nice game for Fairview, and you, and you mentioned it. You know, they're coming into a new conference here, so they're kind of getting into it. Um, you know, it's it takes a little bit of time for you to adjust into a new conference, but I thought he had a really impressive game, and really, he's their main offensive weapon. I mean, they rely on him a lot. He's a senior. He had 164 yards rushing um, and a touchdown, so uh, a pretty fun game to be a part of, and I think you're seeing how competitive the Great Lakes Conference is, Ed, with, like you mentioned, Buckeye. Uh, Bay, Elyria Catholic. Um, I was surprised. I thought that game with Elyria Catholic and Bay would be a little closer, but um, you know, Bay just recovered very nicely um, after that loss. So that's a very telling uh, story for them and a nice comeback. And I'll be, uh, it'll be fun to see them play Rocky River at some point. Uh, agreed, agreed. I, I think we have we have two really good matchups uh, this week in, in, in conference play. Bay. Uh, hosting Valley Forge and yeah. uh, Buckeye hosting Elyria Catholic. So you have four potential playoff contenders all competing against one another there. Um, Holy Name and Rocky River, also a very, very good matchup um, from right from, uh, from what I'm looking at here. And then you got Parma and Fairview, and then Normandy is uh, going to be playing Garfield Heights in their non conference game. Uh, so some exciting football coming up this week. Um, We'll see if Valley Forge can can remain undefeated against Bay against Bay Village. Um, I can tell you that Bay is probably not going to get five interceptions this week because I don't think Valley Forge is going to pass the ball more than five times. 
Um, so they're gonna have to uh, they're gonna have to find a way to stop that uh, Wayne T offense that Valley Forge employs. Uh, if they're able to give up a little bit on Valley Forge and force them to pass, I think that might be where you see Bay being able to take advantage of that uh, uh, of, of of that situation there. Um, for Buckeye and Elyria Catholic, this will be a great matchup. Um, you know, Bay uh, had the first crack at Buckeye when they joined this conference, and uh, Buckeye did very well. Uh, now that there's a little more tape on Buckeye uh, from this season, that Elyria Catholic can study. We'll see if they're able to pick up some ten, some tendencies uh, that that will be able to help them out against the Bucks, yeah. uh, and vice versa for Elyria Catholic. Uh, we'll see what the Bucks can do against against the Elyria Catholic team, who um, who is a little bit on the smaller. They're, they're a smaller school. This so Buckeye is used to playing those types of schools, uh, but they are a very very good team, having made the playoffs last year and, and did a little damage in, while they while they while while they were there. Uh, so uh, we'll see if the Buckeye defense can can take, can can control Steven Navalinsky, uh from EC uh, in that matchup. So great matchups here in the Great Lakes Conference for Week Four. Well, Ed, great job in the Great Lakes Conference and breaking it down for us. And uh, like I said, a job well done again this week in uh, your Week Three recaps. Thank you much, sir. Great, uh, very good write up of uh, of Rocky River and Fairview. Um, it was, a, it was a great, a great first game to uh, to Chris and our show with with the uh, with their conference. Uh, the, the game was definitely it was competitive. It was a, it was a, a great game to to represent us as a, as the Sports on Tap uh, game of the week. Um, have we revealed what next week's game of the week is yet? Did I miss that? Not yet, my friend. Not yet. Stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, stay tuned for the next. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned, everybody. Uh, it's gonna be a doozy. And, uh, and selfishly, selfishly, um, because I haven't uh, been able to talk about Brunswick for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, big matchup against Solon this week. I'm sure Josh talked about it. Um, conference play starts for the GCC. Uh, I um, can't wait. Can't wait to see where. Uh, where uh, a lot of these teams are stacking up. Um, you know, Medina started out very well. Um, you know, Brunswick's obviously three and zero. Franzville also starting out very well, and all the East Side schools, of course, are are, are doing fantastic. Um, you know, part the Euclid, the Mentor, and the Solent. Um, so we'll we'll see. It, 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 it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a great uh, conference season for the GCC. I mean, uh, we'll see where the Blue Devils lie. Uh, we'll see, lie. Sorry, we'll see where the Blue Devils stack up. Um, <laughs> From the first, uh, from the from the first three games, if I, uh, um, I know that uh, we're definitely it's a week by week thing. It's a we, it's a new season. You know, every season of the week, we're we, we're we're going to the season one and zero, and we'll see if we can come out of it one and zero. Absolutely, yeah. great, great coach speak there, Ed. Good job, buddy. Hey, real quick too, <laughs> um, you know, kind of because you know the three of us are Brunswick alums, so uh, clevelandbrowns.com, dot uh, com, Soul and Brunswick nominated. Uh, for their game of the weekend, the winning school does receive twenty five hundred dollars for their football Whoa. program. Uh, so, any Brunswick fans, we know we got a lot out there, or even yeah. Solon fans, make sure you're voting for that game because uh, the uh, the winning uh, team of that will get twenty five hundred dollars for their football program. So that's a pretty big deal. Indeed, indeed, vote, vote, vote. Um... Let's, 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 uh, let's at least give ourselves a shot at uh, 2500 bucks. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Ed, great job. We appreciate you coming on with your uh, Week 3 recaps here in the Great Lakes Conference, and uh, we'll talk to you uh, next week. And good luck on Friday. Thanks very much, guys. Have a great rest of the show. Uh, well done, as always, in your respective conferences, and uh, I look forward to Week 4. All right. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, guys. All right, that's our own Ed Dick as uh, he reports on the Great Lakes Conference, and he gave his Week 3 game recap. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's our G&G Fitness Equipment Company Coach of the Week. Josh, the results are in. Yeah, it was a pretty, like I, we mentioned, a really tight contest this week. Uh, once again, uh, the um, nominees are Rotsky from Euclid, Palacero from Amherst, Rutt from Bay, and Phillips from Stowe. And we had uh, 236 total votes this wow, week. Oh, nice. Uh, and the winner of the Coach 3, uh, <laughs> Week 3 Coach of the Week goes to <laughs> Tom Phillips from Stowe with 48%. Wow. Uh, right behind him was uh, the head coach of Bay, 
Uh, Rutt there, he had 44% of the vote. Um, so thank you all for voting. Um, our coaches uh, of the week will be available every starting every Saturday morning on our Twitter page, so make sure you're voting at there. At SOT Podcast. At SOT Podcast. And, again, our coaches poll is sponsored by G&G Fitness Equipment. Now, we also are, are going to have a poll up here um, what tonight, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, Rob, actually, you announced it. You can, uh, I'll actually our, put it up right now. It's our RRT Productions Player of the Week. And we go to the Suburban League where Hudson is Drew uh, Leitner uh, for um, Hudson. And in the Great Lakes Conference, Buckeye has Armando Nye. In the Southwestern Conference, Avon Lake, Michael Corbo. And in the Greater Cleveland Conference, Medina, Luke Hensley is uh, the pick there. So go to at SOT Podcast on Twitter and uh, pick uh, who you're going to vote for for our RRT Productions Player of the Week. Again, it's Hudson, Buckeye, Avon Lake, and Medina there for Hudson, Drew Leitner. For Buckeye, um, Armando Nye. For Avon Lake, Michael Corbo. And Medina, Luke Hensley. So go uh, to at SOT Podcast and vote for your uh, favorite player. And all these players really had phenomenal weeks, um, or week three, rather. And we'll do this every week um, on our Twitter page. Um, go to our sportsontappodcast.com uh, where we have our stories. We have all of our archived with videos, podcasts, stories, pictures, and all that there. Um you know, we have a lot of good information. You know, try to get involved with the show one way or another. Um, we have all kinds. Of, if if you have information, too, um, I've been contacting coaches to try to get them uh, to send us stats. I know it's a lot, but uh, for our show. And also, we're going to be uh, doing some different radio plugs here and there for uh, uh, WOBL and DLW in uh, Lorraine. So uh, we'll be giving our Southwestern Conference updates. We'd like to have uh, just some stats and player stats and games anything is helpful possible. yeah exactly anything that help is helpful and and uh, can get it out there and promote your school and and promote the kids more importantly so uh great job there and now josh should we reveal our game of the week where yeah. we're going to be at yeah on we Friday? know we know ed is waiting uh waiting to hear where yeah he's uh we're going to be heading a uh, week f- number four so rob without further ado well, we're going to head out to Hudson there you go. as Hudson host Wadsworth. The Grizzlies take on the Explorers, and that is going to be an absolute outstanding game. I, I'm so excited to uh, go out and cover uh, the Suburban League here. Yeah, and this is a, a, definitely a bounce-back game for Wadsworth. I think they're going to come out really firing. They uh, had a tough matchup. And, you know, I guess, you know, kind of think about it, there's a lot of teams now they actually had to stop playing and then restart playing. And you don't know how that's going to affect the team because, like Ed said when he was talking, you know, you're not really used to that. You don't really do that. You maybe have a delay and it's tough to get warmed back up. But uh, to actually stop, go home, shower, and then have to do it all, ago, uh, all over again, all week you prep for that one game. So uh, did that have anything to do with Wadsworth losing to Medina? We'll see uh, how they come out and play on Friday at Hudson. Yeah, and, you know, they're, they're going to bounce back. You know, Wadsworth always does. Uh, you know, it's a tough game. Medina's having a heck of a year. So take nothing away from uh, – Wadsworth played Medina, my friend. Yeah, I know, and Medina won. Oh, yeah. So t- I'm saying Wadsworth has a bounce back game. Oh, uh, you said Hudson had a bounce back. Oh, sorry, Wadsworth. Got me confused, Rob. Yeah, I, I confused myself apparently. But, you know, this is a bounce back game. Let's see how they recover uh, from that Medina loss and uh, – you know, Hudson has lost some close games. They they are looking, to obviously, to get on track, and, and they're still a very tough team. So we're excited to go out to uh, Hudson and uh, be a part of that game. But reminder, go to sportsontappodcast.com, um, where we have all kinds of great information for everyone out there. At SOT Podcast on Twitter. We have a YouTube page, so you can go there. Check out, we do have some video highlights from our games of the week that we like to put up. Um, just kind of, uh, you know, from the game that we don't always put in our game stories, so you can go check those out. Those are very fun to watch, some big hits. 
Um, you see the band playing, all kinds of fun stuff there. We're on Instagram, um, Twitter, all over the place. So be a part of the show if you have information or stories for us, Sports on Tap Podcast at gmail.com. Any last thoughts, Josh, on our week three game recaps? Looking forward to week four. Beautifully said, Monty. <laughs> This one's in the bag. <laughs> Want to thank everyone for listening to our week three game recaps. For Ed Dick, Sean Duffy, Josh Jeffy, I'm Rob Troutman saying so long for Sports on Tap right now. We'll see you on Friday at Hudson. And we'll, everybody else, we'll see you on Monday for our week four game recaps right here on Mixler. See you guys later. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to Sports on Tap. Make sure you visit our website, www.sportsontappodcast.com. We would also like to thank our partners, Greater Cleveland High School Hockey League, home of the Baron Cup. Z's Cream and Bean, make life sweet, eat ice cream at Z's. RRT Productions, we shoot, we edit, you win specializing in sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes and gv artwork and design original and one of a kind thanks for listening to sports on tap make sure you visit our website www.sportsontappodcast.com we would also like to thank our partners greater cleveland high school hockey league home of the baron cup z's cream and bean make life sweet eat ice cream at z's rrt productions we shoot we edit you win specializing in sports recruiting videos for all high school athletes and gv artwork and design original and one of a kind